Namo Buddhaya, this is Abhinav Gulecha and I welcome you. Uh, in this video, I am continuing with my learnings from the Dhammapad and uh, now we come to from verse 261 to verse 280, I will discuss in this video. Uh, this video I am making, uh, I am referring to the book The Dhammapad by Eknath Iswaran. It's a very good book. You can also refer, uh, use this book uh, for your reading. Okay, uh, uh, there is a Dhammapad playlist that is available. So in this channel, uh, YouTube channel, you go and uh, check in the playlist. There is a playlist for Dhammapad and there you will find all my videos on Dhammapad in that playlist. Right? So let us start 261. We are talking about, the Buddha is talking about the qualities of people who are established in Dharma. Right? So it's not basically the talking or the grey hair or the robes. Buddha is saying people who practice the Dharma, who are free of the mental defilements, they are the real practitioners. Right? So Buddha says 261 verse, 261 Buddha says, a true elder. So in 260 verse, Buddha had said, Grey hair does not make an elder, one who can grow old and still be immature. Verse 261 Buddha says, a true elder is truthful, virtuous, gentle, self-controlled and pure in mind. So five qualities, truthful, right? True speech, not false speech, virtuous, having virtuous, gentle, right? Self-control, who has control over self and pure in mind. That is a true elder, right? Verse 262-263 Buddha says, Neither pleasant words nor a pretty face can make beautiful a person who is jealous, selfish or deceitful. Only those who have uprooted such impurities from the mind are fit to be called beautiful. Right? So, beautiful, there is actually, I am getting reminded of a movie called Shallow Hal. In that movie what happened was that the, the person had got some sense whereby he could actually, uh, the person who was pure in mind, he saw those women as beautiful and the uh, uh, even though their appearance was bad they were not good looking whereas people uh, uh, women who are jealous and selfish and all even though they were very beautiful he could see them as uh, ugly so his whole perception got changed so you know so that's a movie very good movie shallow hell right so it's not about the pleasantness and the pleasant face and pretty face outer appearance confuses us deceives us Experiences are often, de often deceptive. So, those who have uprooted jealousy, selfishness, greed, deceit, lust, right? Or in the process of uprooting, they are, they are, they are the beautiful people, right? Verse 264-265 Buddha says, Shaving one's head cannot make a monk of one who is undisciplined, untruthful and driven by self selfish desires, right? He is a real monk who has extinguishes extinguished extinguished sorry all the selfish desires large and small so very very important phrase especially for lay people so then this is what i learned after visiting sarnath and i shared this in my sarnath part 2 video my learnings see it's not about people who are just monks and you know they wear the robes and all they are you know we put them on a very high pedestal and think that they are you know very pure and everything actual the dark side is that Many of them are, many of them are not also, right? So just because a person that who has worn a robe and you think they are very much, you know, um, pure, it can be actually the opposite also. So Buddha is saying the real monk is one who has extinguished all selfish desires. So the, the implication of this is that we can be living in a family life. We don't have to leave the family life and go in a forest. Buddha never said that. But person is a real monk. You can live in a family you can do your own practice, diligent practice. You can be free. Even in a family life, we can be free from all the defilements. That is the person who is a real monk. See, we all, even in a lay, lay life that we live, definitely we cannot wear the robes because we are lay people. But still, we, we Buddha qualifies us as genuine, real monks who have given up the defilement. So our target, friends, is not to like go in a monastery and, you know, spend years in the monastery and only then we will... We can live in this life, in this family life, do all our acts with unselfishness or selflessness and we are, will be considered as monks. This is very deep. Uh, verse 266-267 Begging arms does not make a bhikshu. One must follow the dharma completely. He is a true bhikshu who is chaste and beyond the reach of good and evil, who passes through the world with de detachment. So, Buddha says the importance of you know, being a true 
bhikshu right is a person who follows the dharma right who is beyond the good and good and evil right 268 to 69 buddha says observing silence cannot make a sage of one who is ignorant and immature he is wise who holding the scales chooses the good and avoids the bad so even if the person observes silence there will be lot of chatter that is running in the mind so just by observing silence don't think that someone is enlightened because there is so much chatter anyways is going in his mind he is just observing outside all these things the real wise person is holding the scales who chooses the good and avoiding the who is who possesses vivek wisdom what is good i follow the good what is bad like killing stealing all these things avoid right verse 271 is not noble who injures living creatures they are noble who hurt no one so buddha is again bringing focus to the concept the precept of no killing so person who injures living creatures in any way he is not noble they they are noble who hurt no one so so again don't hurt anyone that is buddha's message verse 271 272 not by rituals and resolutions nor by much learning nor by celibacy not nor even by meditation can you find the supreme immortal joy of nirvana until you have extinguished your self will very deep right so we get stuck into lot of things rituals people get stuck in rituals worships and ceremonies and all these things people get stuck in learning too much they go into learning right so when we are learning also so i also learn the buddha's teachings and important is to take out the practical aspect take out the juice from it don't get stuck in theory don't get stuck stuck in the concepts there are a lot of people in buddha's teachings who get stuck in these concepts no just take out the essence so when i basically make a video on any discourse later on i just i just express the essence of what my understanding is my understanding is also getting refined as i'm on this path but take the essence implement it in your life don't get stuck in the learning thing only not by celibacy just because you are celibate doesn't mean that yes celibacy aids in the path but just by being celibate it's not a guarantee that you'll achieve not even by meditation just by thinking that i will do meditation and no see meditation if you see the buddha's threefold the three elements ethical conduct which is following the precepts that is also not guarantee for achieving full liberation second is mental development mental development yes but that is also not guarantee third which is the wisdom wisdom of knowing the three marks of existence that is everything is impermanent there is no self third everything is suffering that wisdom ha huh, but for that getting that wisdom you have to be have ethical conduct do your meditations so important thing is don't get what my understanding from this verse is don't get stuck in any particular thing any particular process or any particular ritual buddha's teaching is takes you towards the ultimate thing which is wisdom cultivate the wisdom in you get rid of the ignorance and that is that is something which is can only so until you have extinguished your self will so my understanding here is self will is this craving or the you know our selfish actions selfish actions create selfish karma uh, sorry selfish actions create karma now it can be a wholesome uh, selfish action which can attract a wholesome karma or it can be unwholesome selfish action which attracts which creates a whole wholesome karma both the wholesome and the unwholesome karma keeps us stuck in this creation in this samsara so unless we become totally selfless let everything flow as it is right don't you know put our own self into something why we put our own self because we think we are permanent self we will get any pleasure from particular thing or we have aversion towards something else or clinging aversion is also a form of clinging right so we have to get out of all these things right okay next we come to verse 273 onwards this is a beautiful set of verses till 288 so till 280 i will cover here and to 281 onwards i'll cover in the next video so buddha is saying so buddha is talking about the path see what has happened is there has been too many discourses given by the buddha on lot of things but you won't find the noble eightfold path in any of the discourses right it's somewhere hidden and which is the basically the 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 real teaching of the buddha right so 
Buddha is now stressing here of the path. So you don't listen to any other teaching of the Buddha. Just follow the Noble Eightfold Path. Right? I have made videos on the Noble Eightfold Path in my live sessions also you can check. Right? Buddha says, of all paths, the Eightfold is the best. Of truths, the Noble Four are the best. Of mental states, detachment is the best. Of human beings, the eliminated one is the best. Right? So Buddha is talking about the path. So a lot of paths, Noble Eightfold Path is the best path. Noble truths, four noble truths are the best. Mental states, detachment is the best. Not getting attached. Human beings, the illuminated one is the best. Right? So Buddha 274, 275, Buddha says, This is the path. There is no other that leads to the purification of the mind. How direct this is. There is no scope for any ambiguity, any doubt. Buddha is clearly saying, this noble eightfold path is the path. There is no other that leads to purification of the mind. Buddha's entire teaching is on purification of the mind. In mind only the suffering is there. right? We have to just purify our mind. Follow this path and conquer Mara. This path will lead to the end of suffering. This is the path I made known after the arrows of sorrow following. So after the Buddha uh, got enlightened and he gave his first discourse in Sarnath, Buddha, is talk, Buddha talked about first discourse, first sermon to the five disciples, Buddha said about these four noble truths, which is Dharma Chakra Pravartan Sutra, the first sermon, first discourse that Buddha gave in Sarnath. Right? So he talked about these four noble truths and the noble eightfold path. This is the core, the essence of the teaching. Let's not miss this, this core thing. We can do other study also. But this is, everything comes back to this core teaching. Right? So if you, if you see all the other discourses, they also point back, somewhere or the other they point back to the four noble truths and the noble eightfold path. This is the beauty of how interconnected the teachings are. Okay. Right. So next we come to 276. All the efforts must be made by you. Buddhas only show the way. Follow this path and the practice of meditation. Go beyond the power of Mara. Right? Very, very deep. Buddha always said, I will only show the way. I cannot walk the way for you. Right? We we have to make our effort, which is the right effort. One of the paths of the Noble Eightfold Path is the right effort. We have to make the right effort. What is right effort? Doing the things that, you know, put the positive qualities more, like generosity and kindness. Not doing, desisting from doing things that will take away in the wrong direction, like greed, jealousy and all. So that right, doing the meditations and everything. Right? So, no, so doing the right effort, that we have to do. Buddha will only show the way, follow the path, practice the meditation, go beyond the power of Mara. Mara is the personification of the, all the evil and everything. Right? The Mara always tries to restrict us right? through tempting us. He tempted Buddha also. But Buddha was so deep in his, in his uh, knowledge, in his meditation and everything that he could not, Mara could not tempt him. Uh, and then Mara lost, uh, the, you know, he gave up. Right? Verse 277, all created things are transitory. Those who realize this are freed of suffering. This is the path that leads to pure wisdom. So verse 277 is where, basically where the Buddha is talking about the impermanence. One of the three marks of existence. That everything in this creation is intransitory. The fact that you think things to be impermanent gives rise to craving, de desire, aversion in you which causes suffering to you. Verse 278, Buddha says, all created beings are involved in sorrow. Those who realize this are freed from suffering. This, this is the path that leads to pure wisdom. So, all of us, we are involved in sorrow. Right? There is sorrow everywhere. You only need the eyes. So, when Buddha saw the four noble sights, when Buddha saw an ill person, sick person, you know, person who is dead, he had, you know, you and I, we don't possess those eyes which Buddha had. When he saw and he just realized, he was 29 years of age and he realized that this is all suffering. You know, as I am also in this path and I am trying to learn this path as more and more, I now have, you know, after coming on the Buddha's path, I have 
started to realize suffering in the daily things you know you make a friend you no know, yesterday only my daughter was saying that you know uh, her best friend sh- says that someone else is her best friend so this is suffering when you think of someone as your best friend and that best friend says someone else is the best friend so what is causing suffering your own attachment so we are all living in this cycle of attachment and sorrow as we become more mindful in our practice we start seeing this sorrow everywhere right so buddha is saying that those who real, realize this are freed from suffering once i realize that i am creating sorrow for myself then i realize that why what is the purpose of creating this sorrow why can't we i be i be more mature and don't choose this path of sorrow don't get attached to things so this is i am like in the process and we all need to be mindful to see the things so i read somewhere that if you are mindful then everything becomes your teacher and i shared it on the telegram channel also this is a telegram channel that i have at the rate buddha teachings 2 at the rate buddha teachings 2 you can also uh, join that telegram channel i shared on that telegram channel because i resonated so much with that knowledge that everything everything becomes our teacher we our eyes ears faculties open up when we are mindful right walking sitting steep talking every time try to be more and more mindful right okay coming to sorry for digressing coming to verse 279 all states buddha says all states are without self those who realize this are free from suffering this is the path so it's totally the concept of non self everything is changing we are all bundle of the five aggregates body mind mental formations volitions consciousness we are all bundle bundle they are arising in poly every moment everything is changing our minds change every moment we are reborn when we realize that everything is changing then we will get free from suffering verse 280 last verse for this now is the time to wake up when you are young and strong those who wait and waver with a weak will and divided mind will never find the way to pure wisdom how true so this is the time when we are young this is the time when we when we can exert the effort when we can meditate when we can practice the dhamma in the truly but when our mental faculties become reduced we our body doesn't support us then it is difficult it's not that we cannot follow but it becomes more and more difficult for us to practice the way so important is do not put this as the first priority in your life following the dharma and if you put this as the first priority this is i am saying from my own experience everything around us becomes peaceful conducive to the practice of dharma because we are clear in our mind that this has to be the our first practice we don't have to leave families our our uh, social responsibilities but doing everything we can be mindful buddha doesn't said that you do rituals and uh, all which takes away dedicated time no do everything but be more mindful right so and don't and because our life is short right so this is verse 280 we will close here lot of interesting verses that are coming in the after this so do check out the next video from 281 to 300 i hope you have enjoyed this video and have some takeaways do share your takeaways learnings feedback in the comment section i'll be more more than happy to uh, read them uh thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaye namo buddhaye